Hello, good evening, everyone. Welcome. It's a thrill to see you all tonight. It's a thrill to be here. I'm David Spellman, and I'm the founder, along with John Schaefer of the New York Guitar Festival. We have been bringing together guitarists and audiences for 20 years or more now, and uh, in venues including Carnegie Hall and the Met, and here at the Green Space, which at least for my money, is I think one of the, because of its intimacy and uh, the acoustics, is really one of the great listening rooms in New York City. Um, one other thing I wanted to say, oh yes, um, we are a very small not-for-profit organization and as we uh, endeavor to envision our, our next 20 years, we are looking to expand our capacity and to that end, if there's anyone here tonight that thinks that they may perhaps be interested in learning more about the organization and possibly serving on the board, please find me and let's, let's have a chat. And um, anyway, I think you are in for a extreme treat tonight. So without any further ado, please let's welcome our friend and our host for the evening, John Schaefer. Well, welcome to all of you who are here in the green space tonight and everyone watching our live stream as well. I will remind you that as we usually do with these events, we are recording everything for future broadcast on my new sounds program. And uh, while I'm into all kinds of sounds, I'm not so much into phones beeping and ringing and stuff like that in the middle of, of performances. So if you got something that makes noise, Please silence it now before the, uh, the music begins. We've got two amazing guitarists playing for you tonight. Gian Riley and Bill Frizzell are actually, they've played music together in the past. Uh, but Gian's going to come out, do a set. Bill will come out and do a set. And then we'll see what happens. Um, notable by his absence on the stage tonight will be Luke Bergman, who was supposed to be Bill Frizzell's duet partner tonight. Um, Luke has tested positive for COVID and is at home and unable to be with us tonight. But you know, Bill's a big boy. He's figured out a, he's figured out what to do, or he will figure it out as he's doing it, more likely. Um, so we'll have a chance to speak with both of the artists, but let's get started with some music. Uh, his latest album is called Silver Linings, but most of Gion's set will be from that record. The first piece he's going to play for us is an improvisation. It is called And Then... Dot, dot, dot. So please welcome Gion Riley to the green space. <laughs> much everybody oh, boy it's great to be back um, playing for people in person again um, don't worry I'm not going to talk for very long but I just wanted to um, say hello and thank everybody for being here and um, just take um, a moment to appreciate the fact that we're able to do this again it's profoundly important for all of us and um, I'm reminding myself every day, you know, after reading the news, which is often incredibly depressing and, and difficult to stomach, and with all of the, the um, you know, hatred and violence in the world that we read about daily, to be able to come here together and, and share an experience together and just fill a room with love. So thank you for being here to uh, join us in that. Thank you. 
That is Gian Riley and uh, an improvisation called And Then. That's lovely. Thank you. Uh, it has a title. Is, is this like a regular, is this kind of a structured improvisation that is more or less repeatable? More or less, uh, but less than more. <laughs> <laughs> um, Do you want me to repeat it? Huh? Do you want, want me to try and see how close I get? <laughs> um, it's a beautiful piece. Thank you. Uh, so the first time we met, I think you were probably still a teenager. You were playing in your dad's band, Terry Riley and his All-Stars. We were doing a New Sounds Live event. And I asked your dad how it is that he, as a keyboard player and occasional sax player, had a son who grew up to be a guitarist. And it was a pretty funny story that ended with your dad saying it was just like the universe gave him a guitar. <laughs> Do you rem I, I, let's hear your how did you become a guitarist? Yeah, the the skies opened up and it just <laughs> rained guitars. Uh, uh, no, I um I won a guitar in a raffle when I was 12. So, so your dad was kind of right. He was kind of right, yeah. <laughs> or maybe he, you know, paid them off and they gave me a guitar. <laughs> Just to get me to stop playing the violin, which I was doing very badly before that. So, <laughs> so um, the the new, the most recent album, Silver Linings, um, has a number of kind of tribute pieces. One to your dad, one to composer John Zorn, whose music you've played actually with Bill Frizzell. Uh, one to fellow guitarist Dusan Bogdanovich, who's a terrific composer. 
what, what was was this a pandemic wreck? Was this kind of like a where you you know sitting at home and thinking the, the you know counting your blessings and the things and the people you're grateful for? Yeah, that's basically that's exactly what it was. <laughs> Do you want me to elaborate? <laughs> Not if you don't feel the need to. I mean, you said it as well as I could. Okay. Um, yeah, I was just basically like we all had a lot of time to reflect uh, about our you know our lives, our current situations, and what brought us to the moment that we were in and so that one of the things i kept thinking about was even though it seemed like the the world was kind of falling apart there there were um a lot of things to be grateful for and i started thinking about who those important figures were for me and a lot of people you know uh came to mind what about the guy that you used to kick a soccer ball around <laughs> with at the parade he doesn't get a tribute piece on that record next album john all right <laughs> uh, gian is a reg was for a while, a regular in a pickup soccer game I run in Brooklyn. Um, so that's how I got this gig, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, you are no stranger to the New York Guitar Festival, and you know it's great that we are here live in front of a live audience. Uh, last year we were not able to do this, so we did an online thing, and for that you wrote a piece for us, mm, right? and that piece is also on, on Silver Lining. Correct, yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about Sparkling Pines. Well, when David asked me to contribute a piece um, that would be dedicated to Julian Bream, I was up in, um, <clears throat> in the Sierra Foothills uh, in California, uh, my family's place up there, just kind of, you know, breathing some clean air and, and uh, escaping the city, and um, I, the the little cottage that I stay in is it's it's very rugged, but one really nice thing about it is it looks out onto a pond if there's water in it, which you know being California is pretty rare these days. So I I um yeah it was just this like beautiful setting looking at the reflection of the pine trees and um, just kind of shimmering and sparkling on on the surface of the water. Uh, so I yeah it was I was composing this piece. Uh, like look, looking out the window, yeah. and that's how it happened. Now, uh, so there <coughs> is the version on the version on the record is not the recording you did for us for the guitar festival, is it? No, no. the The recording for the festival was done out in in New Jersey. Right. Uh, it recorded um, outside, just before sunset. So there, it's really nice in the video. There are all these leaves moving around, and you hear the leaves because um, uh, Laura Genoni, who did the uh, the sound recording for that has these really great microphones uh, meant to, to you know, uh, for field recording. So yeah. we were able to capture the birds and the leaves and everything. And uh, yeah. So um, presumably when you play it for us now, it is not on the same guitar that was on no. that video. No. Nope. So uh, normally I uh, try to avoid getting too deep in the weeds, you know, with, with guitarists about what they're playing. But come on, it's the guitar festival. We're all guitar nerds. So what is what are you playing these days? Well, um, so I generally still play the same. I've had the same Paul Jacobson guitar I've had for uh, 15 years or so. But this is not. This is a guitar that I just got like a couple weeks ago um, that I am sort of trying out because I have uh, a very long tour that starts in a week. And I'm taking this, so I just wanted to make sure all the, the nuts and bolts and everything are functional before mm -hmm. taking it out for three months. So, <laughs> Okay. How, how big a difference, if any, does the guitar, the actual instrument, make to the, the performance of the piece? Oh, well, the guitar doesn't sound like anything when you're not playing it, so... <laughs> uh -huh. uh, to sort of borrow from an old adage, but it's... Um, yeah, it... I think the... Biggest, the, the most accurate answer to that that I can think of is that uh, it, the guitar um, kind of changes the way we play. So if it's a really inspiring instrument to play in one way or another, it will af affect the way you play it in a positive way. And if you're fighting the instrument the whole time, it'll maybe be a, a less pleasant experience for <laughs> everyone. So. <laughs> All right, so kind of like you know, jazz pianists who you, know, you yeah. get to the club you, and it's like, this is what I'm playing yeah. tonight. You, you All get right, whatever you get. Yeah. <laughs> um, obviously, you have a little more control over it yeah. than a pianist walking into a club or a bar. 
Uh, all right, so the, the rest of your set, these, these are from the album. These yeah. are pieces from the record. Yeah. Um, beginning with Sparkling Pines. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear some more music from Gian Riley.
this uh, next one is called Sometimes You Go Back for More. And I think this title started when, um, I don't know about you guys, but I found myself during the pandemic spending a lot of time sitting on the couch <laughs> wondering about what to do with myself. And um, well, I found myself going into the kitchen a lot more frequently <laughs> than I planned. So I think the, the first suggestion from someone that, you know, like, are you sure you need another beer? I was like, hey, you know, sometimes you go back for more, you know. <laughs> got to have a little bit more, whatever it is. Um, and this, is, this piece has a theme that sort of repeats. Um, you'll notice it's like maybe like a rondo in form or something. Uh, and this was um, generously commissioned by a really good friend of mine, uh, Kenton Youngstrom, who I used to play in a group called the Faya Guitar Trio with. Um, kind of smack in the middle of pandemic, he called me and, and asked me to write him a piece. So it was really well-timed because I had like no money at all. So <laughs> um, anyway, here it goes. Thank you. This is a world premiere, by the way.
Thank you so much. Um, always feels good to play something for people for the first time. <laughs> um, so I'm going to finish up with a couple of movements from a, a three movement suite that I wrote for a teacher of mine, um, David Tannenbaum. And these, uh, these are the second and third movements of the piece, um, which are called Toucher les Nuages and Apatango, respectfully. So uh, the first being more like a very classical sounding piece for me. Uh, and then the second one is sort of more of like a combination of Appalachian folk music and tango. <laughs> Thank you.
Jan Riley. Nice, nice and done. Apatango is the name of the piece. Uh, Silver Lining is the name of Gian's most recent recording. Um, you heard him mention that the, the, the last two pieces were dedicated to his teacher, David Tannenbaum. It reminds me of a story. I, I, you wouldn't know this, Gian, but um, many years, even before we did the Terry Riley All-Stars thing at Merkin Hall, I had presented a New Sounds Live event there. Oh, that's weird. There's like a hundred million skaters going down Varick Street right now. What is that? I've lived in New York my whole life. I've never seen this. <laughs> for, the, for folks watching on the live stream, I'm sorry we can't turn the cameras around, but what is normally a sea of honking cars is suddenly transformed into people on skates. And now the car's back. All right, I don't know what that was, sorry. It's all on the cutting room floor when it comes to the broadcast. <laughs> um, so, so anyway, so uh, Uptown, Merkin Hall, New Sounds Alive, many years ago, modern mandolin quartet. All, you know Mike Marshall probably, sure. yeah. So like amazing virtuosos. We do the show, they come off stage, we're done. They're like all agitated and excited. And I was like, what's, what's wrong? What's going on? They're like, David Tannenbaum is in the audience. <laughs> I, that's the kind of respect that this guy has among string players, among guitarists. So, yeah, nice job. Thank you. All right. <laughs> so tomorrow night on the program, um, we have Baji Assad, the Brazilian singer, <laughs> guitarist, body percussionist. I mean, she is literally a one-woman band and an amazing guitarist from a family of amazing guitarists. You may know Sergio and Odair Assad, her brother's incredible classical guitar duo. So she'll be here. And then for something completely different, uh, Vernon Reed, the uh, co-founder of the Black Rock Coalition and the band Living Color, is going to do duets with Laraji the Brian Eno collaborator who does ambient electronic zither music. So they'll do some duets for us on this stage tomorrow night. I hope some of you can be with us then. Anybody here last night? Yeah, yeah. all right. Uh, Vier Farca Touré and, uh, and Glenn Jones got us off to a great start. Uh, this is night two of four nights in the green space of this year's edition of the New York Guitar Festival. Uh, as I mentioned, Gian was uh, part of last year's online festival. The 2020 festival was also online. Last year was a tribute to the classical guitarist Julian Bream. 2020 was a tribute to the great bluesman Reverend Gary Davis. And Bill Frizzell was part of it. Uh, we asked him to do a version of 12 Gates to the City. He duly obliged, played his six-string acoustic guitar, and then Later that very day, he e emailed me and said, can I do an electric version too? I was like, what am I gonna say, no? <laughs> so uh, he gave us two very different versions of this Reverend Gary Davis tune for our online festival in 2020, but it's so much better to have him here live in person. Please welcome Bill Frizzell. <laughs> Hold on a sec, Bill. We're gonna get a chair so I'm not quite so looming over you. Thank you. So, um, tonight was supposed to be duets with Luke Bergman. Yeah. Luke has COVID. Um, but you're no stranger to performing solo. I think the first time I ever <laughs> saw you play live, you were solo. Oh, wow. The Arts at St. Anne's, sometime oh, wow. back in the 90s, you had a guitar, but also a, lot, a bunch of music boxes. And, oh, right, yeah, yeah. And we actually taped that and broadcast it, as, as I recall. And as I recall, it was kind of almost stream of consciousness. You know, it was 
tunes would pop up it's and then and then they would disappear and other tunes would pop is that is that basically how you construct your solo much. sets it's still going on they just keep <laughs> songs floating by and i try to grab them if i can you know? and for you they can float by from any number of sources i mean you've recorded so many different styles of music what did you grow up with what was your well, what was your first love musically well maybe how old are you no uh, are old we enough to not want to answer that question no no i mean i was born in 1951 so do you need to know more than that i mean <laughs> when, when, uh, how old was i when i was four or maybe maybe four or five when my father came in with this big cardboard box and it was our first television set and that sort of set the you know so much stuff came out of that the mickey mouse club and all that <laughs> that was where i really got fired up with the the idea of a guitar like i don't know if see I'm older than all you both. <laughs> but but there was the mouse the Mickey Mouse Club would come on TV yeah. and there's like the mouse cateers. There's right, right. Um, Cubby and there was Annette Funich. There were, uh, no, I'm not sure she was And there's well, all these two kids of those mouse that they would have become famous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but they I would have these, you know, whatever their adventures and there would be these stuff would go on and then at the end this older guy, Jimmy, would come out with his guitar and he had, it was like the Mickey Mouse ears were on them. Oh, wow. And I just thought it was so cool. And everybody like calmed down and they'd all circle around and he would play his guitar and they'd, and it was like, wow, that th that's like, there's some kind of power in that thing or something. But wow. it was good. I mean, it, it just cooled everything out. And that's what it's been doing ever since. <laughs> so if, Anybody's having trouble, I would highly recommend just get one of these things. And In its own goofy way, that is a really kind of magical story that, you know, so early on, you, you sort of cottoned on to the, the yeah. power. And I actually, I, I took a cardboard box and I cut it in the shape of a guitar and I put rubber bands on it and I pretended like I was playing the guitar and that's it. That's pretty much all I, you know, then got a little older and then. Yeah. But you also <laughs> grew up in an age of TV shows that were true variety shows. Yeah, yeah, you got to see all these guys on TV. Um, yeah, that's like music. They actually thought music was something that people might like. You know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so you would see a country star followed by a jazz musician, a young Frank Zappa playing a bicycle wheel on uh, The Tonight Show with Jack Parr, all kinds of crazy, yeah, John yeah. Cage on This Is Your Life. I yeah, mean, yeah. crazy stuff that, and, and right up until the 70s where, you know, like The Odd Couple. I remember watching The Odd Couple never knowing who was gonna, you know, walk on yeah, that, that yeah. stage, that on that screen next, you know, some, famous opera singer or yeah. dancer or whatever. Um, no, so I feel so lucky with that, you know? And so that kind of omnivorous musical appetite that, that yeah, comes naturally. So, so it's not, I mean, I don't think it's, it's nothing unique to me. It's just that time and I wasn't like nothing radical. I was just sort of following along with what yeah. I thought was then how come all people your age don't feel like? I mean, you know, th there is, there is something a little different about you, Bill Frizzell. <laughs> um, so you are currently, or about to, tour with Charles Lloyd, yeah, one of yeah. a panoply of major musical figures that, that you've played with over the years. And, you know, Charles has, has done some pretty interesting stuff over the course of his career as well, moving outside of the jazz realm, but he is considered a jazz sax player. If you look up Bill Frizzell on Wikipedia, it says jazz guitarist. Does that feel right to you? Um, no, the I audience mean, is answering for you, but I... <laughs> no, I mean, there's the problem with that word, you know, it's like, 
we could go, that could be a whole, uh, <laughs> for me, what that, wh when I. I withdraw the question. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's like, uh, the, the names cause, the words that we use cause problems, you know, yeah. but for me, it's music. And when I discovered what I think of as jazz, or maybe what one way of looking at it was, that was the place where anything, it's just anything was possible. And it was an expression of what, whoever was playing it, it exposed their life and their experience and it, there was no limits on what it, what you could do with it. So that's more the way I think of it. You know, it's the people that inspired me, Thelonious Monk or Sonny Rollins or Miles Davis, you, okay, those are jazz guys, we could, if yeah. you want to use that word, but if you, Look at what they're doing. It's it's uh, it, it, it just encompasses everything yeah. everything that they lived in their life. You know, it's not it wasn't a style. It was a way of dealing with things, <laughs> with the world. You know? Yeah. Um, and of course, making music in the moment. I mean, here in the West, we can we sort of conflate improvis improvised music with jazz. If it's improvised, it must be jazz. Not necessarily the case. Um, so, how much of what you're about to do, do you think, will be improvised? And you know, how much do you kind of have a road map? Yeah, there's. That's where, like, right now, I'm not sure what I'm gonna play. I don't know what I'm gonna start <laughs> with. But no, but you know, like, like say, I've been playing for how many years? 60 years or something like that? Sounds good to me. So there's a couple songs that I've picked up along the way and then <laughs> I'll fall back on right. things. But I really don't know what, I'm starting to panic now. I, no, <laughs> no, no, I, no I, but that's, you know, I, I sort of, you, you play a note and I'll play a note and then it'll, every note you play is like a question, you know, so you, 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 okay, so what's next? So you play another note and then, oh yeah, that's sort of, it'll, one thing leads to another and hopefully I can get through a half hour with <laughs> not any kind of disaster. And that's the only thing about this, like nobody really gets hurt. I mean, I could screw this all up. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's rough on me, <laughs> and you're going to have to sit through it, but, but it's not like, like we're punching each other out, you know? So it's, it's an amazing, music is just awesome, you know? Yeah. Well, I'm going to let you make some. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Frizzell, live from the Green Space.
The question is, should he play more? Let's go on with the thing. Yeah. <laughs> you got one more? Sure, sure I got Okay. One. It might take another hour, but... <laughs>
Bill Frizzell. Okay, so uh, life lesson for the night. If Bill Frizzell asks, should I play more? Always say yes, because that's the kind of thing that can happen. Um, I mentioned at the top of the, of the show that Gian Riley and Bill Frizzell have played together in the past, music by John Zorn. And um, Gian is here still. And uh, the two of them have worked up a little something for us tonight. Gian, you wrote uh, a song for, for John Zorn on Silver Lining, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Was it a solo thing or? Uh, it was, well, played by me, but there are two parts, so it's a duet. So who are you going to get to play the other part tonight? Why don't you bring your accent? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we'll let uh, the guy who's already sitting center stage with a guitar take the, uh, the other part. Ladies and gentlemen, Gian Riley and Bill Frizzell with the Old Castle. Thank you. 
Jan Riley, Bill Frizzell. Live at the New York Guitar Festival, on stage at the Green Space. Improvising their way into the Old Castle. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you all for being here. Night two of our four-night 2022 edition of the New York Guitar Festival. Tomorrow night, duets from Vernon Reed and Laraji. Solo performance by Baji Asad. I hope you can join us Friday night. We have William Tyler playing some of his cosmic Appalachia, and we'll be joined by Marta Pereira da Costa flying in from Lisbon to play the Guitarra Portuguesa, which is the guitar family's crazy uncle that they keep locked away in the attic. <laughs> it's an amazing instrument. You'll want to hear it. Uh, thank you for being with us tonight. Um, watch for this uh, program on the air on New Sounds. You can follow us at newsounds.org to get the details on when that will happen. It'll be in July, probably. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you for being with us tonight. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>